Thank you. Hello, my name is Craig Bennett, and I'm the founder and owner of TechView Snoop. And today, we are going into the first tutorial on Python. The previous video, we got into an introduction on Python, just an overall of this series. But this one, we're going to get into installing the stuff that's needed. Now, things may change over time. We may add things to the list, but as in. So, the, if you watched the previous video, you would already have this stuff downloaded. If not, then please go to the links in the description. While you're down there, leave a like, subscribe, and share. But you want to go to the Python link in the Notepad++. Download both of them and install it. Now, with this, the installing is pretty straightforward, so just go through that. But with that, what you need to do is on, if you're on Windows, go to your control panel. If you're on Windows 10, easy way to do it is right clicking to start. Go to control panel from there. You want to go to the system and security. Then you want to go to system and go into advanced system settings. Go to environment variables. And from here, we need to make a uh, new thing. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is where did you install the the actual Python exe? To find this, you can go into the your start and then open file location properties on that. And this will give you the actual location. And this will give you the exe location. So from here, what you need to do is go into, since we already had this copied, to the variables, type out Python, and paste whatever that is and there we go now as far as seeing if what you just did worked a simple way of doing it is go to command prompt and and do that so, uh, you can search cmd and they'll bring a command prompt and by the way to uh, change the color in case you don't like that it's pretty simple I'll just go to properties go to the color and there you go it's pretty simple so from here, what we need to do is just type in Python and we got it up and run. This um, Python is a interpreted dynamic type white space language. Interpreted uh, uncompile basically means that it doesn't need any supporting files to work. So, for example, with like Android stuff, you see on my Android co coding videos, I need to have a bunch of stuff with it. With this, it's not so much. It's it makes it a little bit slower. But if you're just testing, or um, if you don't need the speed, like if you're doing some very fine finite um, research and development, or weapons like send a missile out somewhere you need calculations so like that um I, I can't really think of too many scenarios where that type of speed will really matter one way or another but for the most part most people won't really notice so example of it is if we go to print um and what we'll get more into this what the print does but print basically is like um on a command prompt it's echo it, it just basically shows the message so any quotations so i'm going to say uh please sub and that's and it will show it so it doesn't need any uh, extra files now as far as the um, white space let's get into that real quick um, 
basically the syntax is uh, is is different between languages, as you may know if you are going from one language to another. But Python's a little bit different. It uses spaces to do it. It's I I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is what it is. So, but but for this, um, we can do a um, I don't know. Oops. So the dot 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 means next line, and we can say he. And because the indentations is off, it it's saying that there's an error. So that little bit is annoying. Where on like check out my Android coding, and you can see where that's not a problem at all. It it actually can understand when where one starts, one's and there's no indentations or anything like that. So that's that's the thing to to keep in mind. Um, Now, dynamically type. This is in the past video, the the uh, intro to this. Again, to where a lot of people find this Python easier to read, but harder to follow up behind someone. Whereas Java, it's a little bit harder to to um, start in, but it's much easier to read someone else's code because everything is defined up front. With Python, it's not the case. So normally with, with stuff, you got integer, um, whatever equals whatever, some numbers. Well, that's not the case here. So say I got A equals one, B equals, Two, and as you see here, if I press A, it goes one. B equals it goes two. Well, now let's say I someone else did this, and I came behind, didn't didn't know that he done this, didn't look and do A equals that. Oh, I accidentally changed it because. Since things weren't defined ahead of time, you're able to change it on the fly. And like I see here, the B stays the same because that wasn't redefined. But because um, we didn't define integers and, and others, it, it gets very confusing very fast, uh, the bigger the project is. And a lot of people like myself will say, use Python. Like if a company has you using it, and company has a using it. But if you're using it for personal or you're trying to, let's say you're a PM, trying to figure out which one to go with, use Python for as small as possible projects. Because the bigger it is, and specifically the bigger each thing is in, in, in the uh, Python, the more of a chance you can actually really mess up something because you just, you know, did this. You just changed the meaning behind all that stuff. Um, that's a big thing to note. Um, but again, that's why it's harder to read someone's code because things can change dynamically. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. So um, as far as that is, that should be enough for a day so it doesn't overload you. But feel free to close down this, or you can exit out, but just close down the command prompt since that's all we did with it. And yeah. But anyways, if you like this video, then leave a like, subscribe, and share. And feel free to ask questions below. I'll try to get to as quickly as possible. If you've got suggestions or anything else, leave that also down below.